Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2021 Isuzu D-Max V-Cross. This is the facelifted model. Actually, this generation was launched in 2012. This is the second generation. Third generation has already come, but Isuzu is still selling us old stuff. And the facelift came in 2015, but here we are in 2021. Straight away, I'm going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle. It's somewhere here. Uh, where is it? I always fail to find it actually have to use the other hand yeah oh my goodness this is yeah not that heavy as such okay you get insulation right there there is the engine makes quite a lot of sound it says Isuzu on the engine cover let's close this so you can see there's a lot of chrome on this car absolutely crazy amount of chrome which cannot be seen in the silver color right now Isuzu boldly written here actually that is their logo as such <laughs> all right you've got chrome here too yes this is a fog light which by the way is a halogen unit the headlight is not completely led you see it gets a by led projector the drls are leds of course however the indicator is again halogen meanwhile when you come to the side you realize that it doesn't look very proportionate as such it says v cross there again chrome outside rear view mirrors with the indicator which again happens to be a halogen unit the wheels actually look quite nice however tire size is actually small actually just an 18 incher 255 60 18 is the size of the tires and you see there's good amount of space between the wheel and the body obviously this is a body on frame there's a side footstep thankfully because you have to climb inside chrome door handles this is the request sensor for the keyless entry it says isuzu security system this you do not get on the other side that is a roof rail yeah roof rails are there see there's a shark fin antenna too this gap looks a little worrisome to me however maybe this is how it's done although coming to the rear of the car it says 4x4 tell to tell you that this is a four wheel drive in fact the complete spec sheet is on the truck itself it says ESC, Electronic Stability Control, right there, yeah, it says that, so that's just easier for you to remember that this car has got ESC, there is a high mounted stop lamp there, and at the rear, again, these are LEDs, the brake lights, this is not LED, neither is this, this is obviously the indicator light, and this is the reverse parking light, it says Z Prestige, which is a top end variant, DDI, which is the engine name, Isuzu sticker, boldly written, Isuzu D-Max written right there, and uh, i believe this is for the reverse parking sensors you get a lot of chrome here as well they've gone crazy on chrome chrome here too and this is the reverse parking camera yeah there's the reverse parking camera meanwhile i'll show you from behind dead angle it doesn't look attractive at all unfortunately all right you can see the underpinnings because body on frame meanwhile the spare wheel has been placed below now you guys have to tell me whether it's a full size spare wheel with an alloy or not i'm showing you completely and there are the leaf springs omg leaf springs all right let's open this which means you press this button and there you push it upwards there it comes out there's a rope which is not part of standard equipment again it says isuzu right there and you just put it down like this there is the massive boot yeah you can carry a lot of things i kid you not you can actually carry a small car inside her that's how humongous it is i would have climbed inside and done some shenanigans but you know this is not going to allow me to do so however there is carpeting here so in case you kidnap somebody oh shit that person will feel comfortable due to the carpeting maybe they could have put an air conditioning as well okay but this is really very heavy absolutely crazy heavy let's do one thing let's shut this and oh my god this requires a lot of effort let's shut this as well yeah thankfully it has got hydraulic struts so it closes properly yeah that is closed coming to the other side from here i can see flared wheel arches and here is where the fuel actually goes so you have to open it from the inside actually and it says do not put fuel here which is not safe as such okay let's get inside the rear first and foremost let me tell you that the doors open decently wide not enough like the tada doors which is the leader in terms of opening doors okay <laughs> and this seat is a bit too upright it's actually very upright not a bit upright it's very very upright but you can increase the storage space here by putting the seat up yeah you can put the seat up this slots in somewhere but the seat can be put up in order to increase the load carrying capacity yeah. yeah there you see it's not that difficult at all so that's again a handy thing now this seat does recline actually there it reclines you can recline this seat but you know what <laughs> you can't carry long items you don't need to because that space is enough to carry long items now with the headers down it can actually go completely down but again that's going to be a bit of an effort because that seat is pushed to my driving position but still we're going to try yeah there it goes so i don't think this is much practical it's better to put it up to carry 
luggage that is put it back into place there is a center armrest which doesn't get cup holders and this is very basic first and foremost door pockets are big enough i mean you can carry a 1 liter bottle lot of hard plastics crazy one piano black finishing right there and let me tell you there is good amount of knee room there's good amount of leg room as well not really scooped out but there is a magazine holder there is a usb charging socket and there are twin cup holders because they missed to put the cup holders inside this center armrest no problem with the leg room head room is also just about adequate meanwhile there is a hook and a handle there is a handle on all the doors but the hook is only for rear seat passengers light in the center again not led doesn't have to be live surround sound it says okay speakers are giving me expectations where i am going to be disappointed for sure see the dashboard design well seems fine not that great as such but under thigh support is very 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 poor it's quite surprising and the seat is so freaking upright it's not really comfortable and this is exposed this is obviously for the defogger yeah for this defogger meanwhile no height adjustable seat belts at the rear but you get height adjustable seat belts for the front passengers which is actually a good thing okay getting in and out is actually easy if you're tall otherwise it's not so and there's no v cross branding here why does it need to be there because they're on the front and by the skip rear there maybe they were out of paint shuts with a not really a proper third now it shuts and i'm just going to get in from here because they are twin glove boxes and the top one actually gets a power socket a 12 volt charging socket as well very small top one bottom one is also very small there's no cooling function here but you can cool your drinks if you so wish some amount of leather they have put and some good stitching so this is actually soft which is nice but this is actually actually not very hard as much as this one the lower parts are really very hard so you can see extensive cross cutting which has been done okay you get this nice beautiful stitching it says v cross now obviously these are art leather covers which is actually nice because it's a very 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 comfortable inside this car it has to be it has to go the long haul and because the ride quality is so atrocious it has to have really good seats to kind of nullify that effect i don't know if that works or not meanwhile let's get inside let me tell you straight away that it gets a electric adjust six way electric adjust for the driver seat okay which is there on the top spec variant only these are the controls for the power windows the driver gets the one touch up and down just to lock or unlock the vehicle this is for the power window lock rather than the child lock again good stitching here on the door pad with this whitish finish door pocket is actually small for the front but the good thing is this actually feels nice so you put your hand feel comfortable again piano black finishing chrome finishing right there lot of buttons first and foremost this is open hood of the car stop the indicator please <laughs> this is the button to open the fuel lid which we'll do right now there is a very minor storage space here this is the headlight leveler this is for downhill assist this is to adjust the outside rear view mirrors and you can press a button to close the outside rear view mirrors if you so wish yeah traction control button is actually hidden which trust me on this you're not going to see because it's just like behind the stock and there is i button to browse through that multi information display but we will come to that in a bit let me show you what's happening here okay yeah it says diesel but this is not really finished i mean it can actually hurt you so this could have finished stuff slightly better you heard that metal noise as well the metal cling yeah i expect isuzu to offer a lot more at this price point doesn't get an auto dimming inside rear view mirror either that's so shocking the variant which is lower the, the 24 25 lakh variants they do not even get side airbags so isuzu has actually done a maruti by not offering side airbags on a very expensive car but that's something which we expect from japanese car makers okay now you can actually okay it says that you can adjust the steering wheel both for reach as well as rake we'll try that in a bit this is this dummy where the keyhole is actually so here yeah, let's try this actually let's be honest steering is only moving up and down it has no adjustment for reach it is only height adjustable Meanwhile, let's close the door. Let me know if you hear a third. Yeah, it has a proper third. SRS airbag. There's a handle to hold on to for both the front passengers, of course. There is a sunglass holder on the top. Light placement here. Yeah, that is something which is mandatory. Meanwhile, there is actually a mirror right there, but there is no light, which is kind of unfortunate. However, here you can see there are instructions for the four-wheel drive mode, but there is no mirror as such. Now there is storage space here as well. Things are not that easy to operate. Okay, there is a small storage space here on the top, and again you get this cup holder to cool your drinks. Meanwhile, steering feels nice to hold. Says Isuzu right there. These are the buttons for the cruise control system. These are the buttons for the audio system. This is the engine start-stop button, 
and there must be a hidden button here. <laughs> this is for the parking sensors. Why do they hide the buttons? I have no idea. Now, this is obviously for the air conditioning system. Here I'm going to turn it on. The, the air conditioning system of the vehicle, and uh, we're going to turn it off. Air conditioning is actually very useful. Well, I mean, it works very nicely. Twin cup holders. The rear cup holder is a little different shape. Physical handbrake. This is for the four-wheel drive mode of the vehicle, like two high, four high, and four low. Meanwhile, below the front center armrest, there is storage space, and there is the Lexus key as well. Okay, now there are a lot of dummy buttons here. One has the USB charging socket, and there's a 12 volt charging socket. So actually, they've done a good job by giving a lot of charging sockets in this car. And I think I've dropped something. There it is. Let's put this back into place. Now this is the gear lever. It has a shift lock. Very easy to operate. We're going to get into reverse, so I can show you the reverse parking camera. That is the reverse parking camera. It gets guidelines. The guidelines are not adaptive. There is a CD player here as well, but this is a very basic system as such. Let's listen to an audio right away. It has got a touch. It's a seven-inch unit, but it's not very slick as such. And again, the graphics are really poor. There's not much to browse inside. There's just the audio system is there. Nothing else. No Apple CarPlay. No Android Auto connectivity. Although there is a USB as well as a aux port there. This is for the hazard light. You got this piano black finishing around the AC vents around here as well, and it's written V cross just in case the co-passenger forgets which is the car that person is sitting in. So that is very essential. Okay, jokes aside, let's see the instrument cluster. Before that, I think I need to put this steering wheel down. Okay, actually, it is not a complete circle any which ways. This is actually the control for the wipers. Let's use the wipers right away. A decent amount of spray on offer. Wipers also work decently well. Nothing great, nothing much to talk about. These are the controls for the headlights. And you see, there is a multi-information display in the center. And I told you about this I button. You can browse through stuff. There are actually nine menus. One is trip and odometer. Then you have got trip B as well as average fuel efficiency, instant fuel efficiency, average speed. What is the distance for that average speed? Elapsed time, distance range and the usual stuff it also tells you what is the level of the diesel particulate filter meanwhile also the ad blue level and how much range you have on this ad blue and then you can obviously select the mode when you select the mode it shows there what is the mode so four high or four low or whatever it actually shows you right there now this is the fuel meter this is the temperature meter this is the outside temperature is 34 degrees and this is i probably the clock or the time or whatever stopwatch who cares speedometer tachometer everything seems analog and telltale lights are placed everywhere as such the horn it's very average a horn i expected better for a car which looks this scary or purposeful on the outside but you know what i'm really sad with the amount of hard plastics and the cost of the car and the amount of features this definitely needed more features for the price but anyways let's start driving right away but before we get going i have to show you some cool bits about the car first and foremost it gets isofix child seat mounts but that's not important it obviously gets abs ebd traction control system electronic stability control and all that but what i really wanted to show you guys was this the hidden storage compartment which is kind of ridiculous so first and foremost look at this metal finish yeah come on guys you could have done better there's a secret storage compartment here which even i missed to be honest and then things are exposed you can actually see the steering column so i expected a lot better because isuzu doesn't seem to have finished this car properly which you would not expect from a japanese car maker okay the front seats are very comfortable you get a proper dead pedal which is kind of small and it somehow has the tata logo on it not the tata logo but tata's tri star is there on the dead pedal i don't understand the logic tata motors have you seen this if you have you know you saw it first on my channel and i helped you actually find people who are copying the design of your cars <laughs> okay this exposed here but the brake pedal is big enough meanwhile i think we just okay what is this carpet finishing yeah that's kind of exposed it says isuzu on the carpets as well and i don't know why this design is there maybe to you know rest your foot properly anyways let's start driving right away all right we're all set to go which means turning on the car look at the vibrations okay yeah it does a full swipe up here which is also pretty cool first thing air conditioning off it says isuzu media solutions honestly there's no media here to have a solution anyways handbrake down i'm going to turn off the traction control there traction control off nuren can you see if traction control is turned off or not i cannot see it from here yeah now traction control is off actually you have to keep it pressed left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor and off we go and the camera is already moved i have to stop no, 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 it's not. You can hear some diesel clatter. Anyways, let's get going again. Well, acceleration seems brisk. We're going to stop. Braking performance is okay. Okay, nothing great. No rear disc, rear drums, but quite a lot of nose dive under heavy braking. Quite a bit of wheel spin on offer. So you see, 
this engine actually is very silent and refined for the most part only thing is there's a diesel clatter at idle and then once you push it beyond two and a half three thousand rpm it becomes very vocal indeed now this is a 1.9 liter diesel engine which produces 163 horsepower 3600 rpm now you're going to get into manual mode now check every gear okay in first gear it does 40 kilometers per hour 4400 rpm red line we are going to upshift into second takes three years to upshift takes a lot of time indeed in second it does 70 kilometers per hour yeah 4300 rpm again we are going to upshift again upshifts take a lot of time the gearbox is very slow which you realize only in manual mode and there's no other mode for the powertrain other than the fact that you can slot in the triptronic function in third gear you shall see what's going to happen coming to a corner it's not allowing me a downshift oh my god it rolls it rolls it rolls it rolls tremendously there's so much amount of rolling because this camera is continuously moving i have to stop again now we're going to take off very smoothly so that the camera does not move <laughs> okay we are in manual mode right now by the way i was telling you what is the power output the power output happens to be 163 the torque output happens to be 360 newton meters which comes in between two to two and a half thousand rpm we are going to shift into third and then i'm going to go flat onto the throttle because we will see what speed it hits in third i think it should cross 100 kilometers per hour no it's just a tad under 100 kilometers per hour but this mode is useless because there is no performance beyond two and a half three thousand rpm it kind of dies out there so it is great in terms of tractability in terms of drivability in terms of low end punch mid range is so so because it starts to you know decline the overall performance and the torque rush and the top end is absolutely useless there's nothing in the top end of this vehicle and that's kind of disappointing actually you expect that right because this engine is a diesel motor and diesel engines usually do not have top end fork anyways we'll just let the gearbox shift itself now this is a six speed torque converter gearbox which does a decent job when it's shifting on its own but it does a terrible job when you try to shift yourself because you know somehow it's able to get to the right gear almost every given time resulting in more than adequate performance for most users now of course this is heavier because it gets a four-wheel drive system this way is two freaking tons there's a speed breaker and you can just glide over it So the ride quality is actually so-so, so-so because this is a body-on-frame platform. It's having leaf springs at the rear, which doesn't bode really well for the ride quality unless and until you load the car with a lot of luggage. And that bed at the rear, that can accommodate 180 kgs with a full house. Obviously, ride quality becomes better because of leaf springs, but for the most part, the ride is not good at all. It's very uncomfortable. Actually, at slow speeds, it feels really nice. But after that, the typical body-on-frame issues come into the picture, which is continuous movement. This is bounciness even on the smoothest of roads and this is a car which just lacks ride comfort but then it's a body on frame platform so what do you expect this is all about low lugging a lot of load and going off road where it's very capable because obviously it's got the modes it's got four wheel drive it's got four wheel drive low naturally and then the fact that it's a body on frame platform which gives it that indestructible feel somehow so yes ample amount of ground clearance as well but the handling is not that great which is expected because there's a lot of roll a ton of roll and the amount of vocalness from the motor is absolutely baffling then you come to such roads you don't have to even worry you can just glide through it because obviously you know this is where a body on frame platform feels so nice that indestructible feel comes into picture it moves but it just feels so composed and this is a very cumbersome car to drive in the city you know why it's cumbersome because it's massive in terms of length it's like you need four or five people around you to help you navigate from this car then comes the bigger issue of the hydraulic steering which is extensively heavy it weighs up decently well at high speeds but it's super duper heavy in fact i am going to demonstrate how difficult it is to take a u-turn so here steering obviously requires a lot of effort and then because of the length of this car i'm going to do it a few million times to just be able to browse the only thing is that if you don't judge things properly you have no problem you can actually yeah i, I just did that you can just climb a divider if you so wish so you don't have to worry about that ground cleanse is just ample it's like more than ample more than anything you would ever ever need now the fuel efficiency is between 8 to 12 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style now because the car has a lot of weight obviously it tends to sip fuel naturally and uh, i am kind of baffled with the pricing of this car okay first and foremost there are four variants on offer the highlander is the base variant you may not classify it along with this car but that one cost 20.62 lakhs there are two mid variants called the z z z variants okay they lack a lot of features and 
they are available with a 4x4 manual actually the lower variant is the 4x2 automatic because the automatic is obviously cheaper than a 4 wheel drive system the manual 4x4 is more expensive because 4x4 is more expensive than 4x2 of course when compared to what is more expensive between manual and automatic gearbox options and this one costs around 5 lakhs more than those variants and this is the top of the line this is the 4x4 automatic so as i see it a very unconventional way of doing variants by isuzu however the cost of this car is 29.6 Two lakhs, yeah, very expensive for what it offers because a lot of kit is missing, and then it's not really comfortable. And this is an old model, so Isuzu has not even given us the latest generation of the D Max V Cross. And if they have given us the latest generation, then probably the price could have been justified to a certain extent, but still the price wouldn't be justified because it just feels under equipped and overpriced. And that's coming from Isuzu. It's funny because Isuzu, as a company, has been able to make some inroads into India by offering aggressive pricing. For the earlier V Max D Cross, but D Max V Cross, whatever the name is, but they kind of missed the board. I don't know why for BS6 and for these updated models they are charging such a massive premium. Maybe they think there is no other option in the market. Maybe they might be right, but honestly, no one's going to buy this car at this price point unless maybe dealers are going to do massive discounts, which is obviously going to affect the resale value. And there is so much roll and sound <laughs> coming from the tires when you try to corner. And the good thing is the steering is accurate enough, so you know where you are heading. Only thing is everything moves around so much, like absolutely crazy indeed. Okay, Nuren was like shifting like this. She did not trust that this car has six airbags. It does have six airbags. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> okay, we're gonna make a quick stop. I disappointed with the brakes. They could have been so much better. Oh, box down, unfortunately. And now it won't rev. Now it will. That is the way to launch it. That's the fun of rear-wheel drive. Of course, driving in four-wheel drive makes it a lot more capable. So as I see it, this is actually quite an impressive car. Now, if you think this is a Japanese car, so upkeep costs are going to be very less. You are highly mistaken, because a lot of my friends who have actually bought it in Suzuki were not really happy with the service and the you know maintenance and also with spare part issues and the reliability of this car. So just don't take things for granted. Yet, however, I feel that Isuzu could do a lot better by offering much more attractively priced cars, and this car fails to deliver in that regard. I would say this is one of the most overhyped cars I have driven in recent times. This should have been priced at least a minimum five lakh cheaper. So that is how it is. Unfortunately, can't change much about it. So, guys, this is my vlog of the Isuzu D Max V Cross. This is the 21 model, 2021 for India. Abroad, though, this was discontinued long back. The third generation model was launched in 2019. I don't know why we are being dished out the second generation at such a high price. So, take a decision very smartly because if we continue buying such cars, then why would Isuzu feel the need of giving us the latest? And that, for a brand which is not well known in the Indian market, comes as quite a surprise indeed. If you like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's a like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Come on, downshift, yeah. It takes its own sweet time. Bye bye.